Jazzcast Pros. Welcome to Living the Front Seat Life Podcast. It's me, your host, Kelly Marie. And if you're listening, then it's probably just a regular podcast for you. But if you're watching, that means you are one of the first folks to ever see a live recording of Living the Front Seat Life Podcast. So I am at the Eat Off Art pop-up shop in downtown Buffalo. Um, and I am so excited. It's kind of weird. I feel like a fangirl because the two owners are longtime friends of mine, but you can see some of the artwork in the background. They are exceptionally creative, creative people. And I'm going to get them on camera and talk a little bit about mental health. So you'll have to either go online and check that out on Instagram or Facebook, The Front Seat Life. Um, Or we may be able to even do like a little outtakes um, behind the scenes kind of a thing on YouTube. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's first time for everything. And this is the first time I'm recording and you guys can see me. Listen, I put makeup on for y'all. You see, I have on mascara and eyeliner. I did this for you. I have on real clothes. I'm normally recording in whatever I found on the floor. But I'm clean all of this just for you guys. Well, and Alexa and Adrice too, because, you know, we're a mixed company. So when you're around other people, you got to kind of do little things differently. So welcome, you guys. Welcome. It is the week of Christmas. And while not everyone celebrates a holiday, it's still a high stress time. Um, you know, between the media, between driving around in your towns or cities and seeing the, the winter decorations. Um, all of the Lifetime movies and Hallmark movies about love during Christmas time and, you know, Santa Claus making special things happen for special people. You know, this could be a great time for you. Those could really be your jam or you could be like, eh, maybe not. So regardless, we're still in, I'd say, a high emotional time for most folks, no matter what side of the spectrum you're on. Christmas may also not be a a holiday that you celebrate at all. Um, I'm an in-betweener. I'm not really a a big Christmas person, but at the same time, I do appreciate winter stuff. It could be because my birthday just passed, but it could also be because winter is just adult season. So, but listen, let me just add a little asterisk. Not the winter when it's like muddy snow and dirty, like that pretty fresh fall and winter when you can go outside without a coat on. That's the kind of winter I like. So being in Buffalo, we don't have that for our nine months of winter, but um, we have it from, you know, time to time. So it's, it's cool things. So back to the topic, um, uh, mental health, uh, um, setting emotional expectations for the holidays, It may be easy for you to do. It may not be so easy for you to do. And the first thing I want to let you know is it's okay. First of all, wherever you are, however you're feeling, it's okay. If you're feeling good, that's okay. If you're not feeling good, that's okay too. It is okay to not be okay. Not just right now, but generally speaking, because we're talking about mental health. We're talking about all of the reasons why we can increase our mental health and understanding that it's okay to not be okay is one of those ways to actually increase your mental health. So I only brought up Christmas um, because of the, when this you know, goes live, when it airs and, and when you'll get it. But I mean, there's Hanukkah, there's Kwanzaa. Um, there are other holidays that I don't know about that are happening right now. And, um, It's also time for family to get together. Uh, A lot of folks are off from work or off from school. And um, whether you are a holiday person or not, you may still, you know, be in the throes of what holiday season is like. And that emotional baggage can be a lot. That emotional strain can be a lot. And so I want to um, talk about four, just four quick steps um, that you can implement for little tools that you can use to help get you through this time. Um, And as I talk, it may turn into five or six or seven, but right now I have four. We'll see what happens as the broadcast goes on. But the first thing I really want to encourage you to do is to be kind to yourself. I say it a lot, but being kind to you 
is so important at times like this. Um, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, we put a lot of stress on ourselves to be perfect always, but a lot of folks even, um, you know, they, they go a little further and push themselves a little more during the holiday season with the perfect gift cards, with the perfect, you know, family photos, with the perfect dinners, with the perfect gifts, period. And it's, it's, it's not always possible. First of all, it's not possible to be perfect, but it's not always possible to get everything the way you want it to be. So being kind to yourself, um, really is the first tool to managing your expectations and emotions and this time right now. So what does that look like? What does being kind look like to you? So for me, being kind to myself really is negating self-talk, um, stopping the, the conversation from happening before it, it happens. You can't always change the um, or, or determine the thoughts that come into our headspace, but we can determine whether or not we feed them. We can determine whether or not we focus on them. And you can choose if you focus on the negative thoughts, the, the over-consuming thoughts, or on um, more well-balanced, uh, healthier thoughts that pop into your mind. So um, that's one way you can be kind to yourself is when that um, conversation starts to gently shift to something more positive. I know I've shared with you guys um, the story of Michael Phelps when he was going through uh, a depressive episode. His therapist told him, um, and self-talk was an issue. He was having a lot of negative self-talk and um, thoughts of unworthiness. And so the therapist told him every time he walked through a door, every time he walked through an archway, to say something positive about himself. This is another tool that you can implement. So you might be at home and you're not leaving your house. And if you're not leaving your house, you're like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm not walking through any archways, but you are. You have to get up and go to the bathroom. When you leave your bedroom, come back into your bedroom. We're talking doorways and archways. So if you're going into another room of your house, regardless, you're moving through another space. And that's plenty of opportunity for you to tell you how great you are. I struggle with this sometimes and I will default to using that strategy. And sometimes it's just a little kickstart. I just need a little something to get me going so that I can focus on positive thought processes instead of those negative or overwhelming ones. So if you're going to be kind to yourself, I want to encourage you to set expectations. Set expectations for you, set expectations for others. So we're talking about um, you know, some folks may not want to celebrate the way they used to. Maybe they have never celebrated before and now all they want to do is spend time together. Everyone's in a different place. And so it's important for you to know what your expectations are, what's good for you and what's not good for you. This kind of ties into boundary setting. So setting expectations. Are you expecting people to come to your house? Are you Letting people know, don't expect to see me because I'm not coming to your house. Whatever those are, are you celebrating? Are you not celebrating? Are you gift giving? Are you not gift giving? Do you have a, a dollar amount on gifts? Do you want to, you know, do some outdoor activities because you want to spend time with your friends and family, but not in close quarters the way that you used to? There's a lot of expectations um, that people have, and usually expectations don't match up. Sometimes they do, but they don't always match up, even if you're in a repetitive situation. So even if it's family dinner and you always have family dinner every year, people have different expectations of what that's going to look like. And they're not going to be the same, even though you're in the same space time and time again. So setting those expectations and communicating them clearly to those that you love or those that you don't love um, it really is a great tool that you can use to help manage your emotional, um, I, I really don't want to use the word luggage, but we'll, we'll use that, your emotional space, your emotional space for a time like this. So we have be kind, we have set expectations, and I mixed in there set boundaries. Boundary setting is really key. You can set your own expectations, but if you don't articulate them, if you don't have um, stipulations around what those expectations will and will not do or uh, the repercussions for, um, I know, I think you guys know where I'm going with this, but when you have repercussions for your expectations, hi, <laughs> it's so much easier to set boundaries. 
Those boundaries are going to help you help yourself. Those boundaries are going to help you really figure out and be better able to deal with your emotions. We're talking about emotional health. We're talking about mental health. We're talking about what it means to really um, be healthy at a time like this. So we have be kind to yourself, set expectations, and set boundaries. The fourth one is to be the light. Now, I talk about be the light and being the light all of the time, but what does that mean right now? It may not be easy to be the light. Again, we have all of these things going on around us. We're managing loss. We're managing the expectations of others. We're managing our own expectations and setting boundaries. And it's not always easy to remember to be the light, to be that voice of kindness, to be that kind act for someone. Now, usually this is the time where a lot of folks are giving. Um, they are making urine contributions. And this is a time where... Um, you know, food pantries have, have food overwhelming their shelves because a lot of people are giving. They're giving of themselves. But there's a difference between giving a thing, like making a donation, and giving something internal, like kindness. So be kind to others, being the light, opening the door, saying hello. You don't have to say happy holidays. You don't have to say Merry Christmas. You don't have to say anything. You can just open the door and be the light. You can say, hello, how are you? And wait for an answer and be the light. You can be open and honest with where you are, setting expectations and those boundaries and still be the light. So I encourage you guys, when you are really looking at taking on too much or setting those boundaries, I'm going to go with setting boundaries and expectations so you're not taking on too much, but talk your own and you're going to do whatever it is you want to do. My recommendation would be to set those boundaries and only take on healthy amounts of things. You know what that's going to be, and it's going to be different for everyone. So one of the things that I did not originally um, intend to mention, but I think is important to talk about is asking for help. We have got to get to the place where we are comfortable asking for help. It's okay. We're human and we cannot do it all. And so in asking for help is not showing that you're um, weak or you, you can't handle things. It's saying, listen, I know what I can handle and I need help handling the rest. It is a, a positive affirmation towards setting those boundaries and those expectations. So I want to add that to the list. So now you have five, 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 five tools that you can use. And I'm calling them tools because you have to work them. Right. They're not things that just just happen and, and occur. You have to actually do something with them. And it's all a part of self-care. Um, I just was uh, participating in a panel and we were talking about um, boundaries and what burnout looks like and being the light and, and setting all of these expectations. And one of the things that I think was um, most profound was that so many people from so many different backgrounds all agreed around what mental health was and is and what burnout is and how we can go about being healthier individuals. So I think that's it, folks. You have your tools. Now you have five instead of four. You got that little bonus tool and you are on your way to managing not only this week, but the new year. It's coming and we are going to talk about it. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe, follow, share all of that good stuff. Leave comments. Um, again, this is our first video of the podcast, our, our video podcasting episode. And so maybe we'll do more. Maybe we won't. I don't, I don't know, but we'll see as we move forward. A big shout out to Alexa and Andres Wajit here at Eat Up Art for hosting Living the Front Seat Life podcast. Um, I love being in this space. I love being in their space. They're great, amazing people. And I want you to check out um, the uploads for our conversations that we're doing, like behind the scenes, post-production, fun stuff. I'm saying it's fun, but we haven't done it yet. So I'm, I'm just letting you guys know, I really believe that it's going to be fun. So until the next time, I encourage you to be the light and take some time for yourself. Ooh, me. On location, okay. like that, it adds to the depth of the broadcast. Okay. Yes. <laughs>